Well, what is happening, Bond fans? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dial, and welcome to another edition of my podcast. And today we are continuing on in the James Bond 007 franchise. We'll be talking about every James Bond film, including No Time to Die, which uh, if you're watching this review, uh, I think it's out in theaters by now. So it's already out. So, yes, we are late. I know we're going to do our best to to get the rest of these Bond films out the way and then we can actually talk about No Time to Die. Um, we're going to go see it the, tomorrow as of this recording, um, Evan and I. So I m- might think about doing initial thoughts, maybe. And then maybe late, later down the line, we'll actually do a full sport discussion as we usually do. But, um, yeah, so we're talking about every James Bond film. Uh, we've already talked about the previous Bond films from Dr. No up until License to Kill. So if you guys haven't seen any of those reviews, I'll leave a link in the description below to a playlist on my channel called James Bond 007. But today we are getting into the Pierce Brosnan era of James Bond movies. We're talking about the first one, Goldeneye. And joining with me, as always, is Evan. Yeah, I'm hyped. Let's go. All right, let's do this. Um, okay, so Pierce Brosnan. Um, well, before we get to Pierce Brosnan, um, we did really enjoy um, Timothy Dalton's quick run as Bond. He only had two movies. Um, we did like The Living Daylights, and we really, really enjoyed License to Kill. And uh, it's bittersweet that we had to see him go so early. Um, I would have liked to have gotten two more movies out of him, but you know, it is what it is. Um, though with Pierce Brosnan, uh, this was a guy that they were trying to get Bond for a while before Timothy Dalton was in the picture. You know, he was busy doing um, the Remington Steel show, you know, because they renewed another season before um, the Broccoli's were even thinking about bringing them to the franchise. So they have to wait a little longer. But yeah, now that Dalton's out the way, they can finally get Brosnan in here. Um, so Brosnan is my introduction into James Bond. He is the first Bond I ever watched. Um, weirdly enough, um, Goldeneye was not the first, um, Brosnan film that I saw from him. I actually, the first one I saw was The World Is Not Enough. And then, um, I watched Tomorrow Never Dies. And then I watched Die Another Day. So Goldeneye was the last All over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place for sure. So yeah, Goldeneye was the last Brosnan film I watched. Um, so up until that point, um, I got a pretty much a good vibe of what Brosnan was before I got into Goldeneye. There was a while I didn't even know it existed because as I said, the DVD um, collection that I had, they were out of order. They were just like, it was just putting ra- putting in random um, numbers of the Bond films in, in three different cassettes, they're not in order. So that's how I, got to see world's not enough before the other ones um so i finally got to um uh watch golden eye because my dad got the rest of the dvd sets and uh golden eye was in there and i was really surprised oh wait oh there's another rosin film yay awesome um so yeah sat down and watched this um and it's it this this is an interesting one because I have been going up and down with this movie. Um, I'll say the first time I watched Goldeneye, I'll be honest, I didn't really like it. I didn't. Um, I know for Goldeneye, uh, for a lot of people, they say that this is one of their favorite Bond films. Um, and for this, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of frustrating for me. Cause like, you know, Bond, as I said, is my introduction into the franchise. And I'll, I'll say up front, Brosnan, I think is my favorite Bond out of all of them. I know it's not the popular thing to say. I know a lot of people go to Connery or Craig for the most part, but Brosnan, you know, I really, really enjoy his Bond. So I'm watching Goldeneye, which a lot of people say is probably his best one. And I'm like, I'm just not, I wasn't really feeling it. And then a couple more times I watched this, um, like there were times where I felt, okay, this is okay. This is okay. It's not as bad. And then there was a time where, oh, I love it. And then I went back to being like, oh, it's okay. 
and then there's other things that would just frustrate me about the movie. It's just it's it was a really polarizing film for me at the time. Um, rewatching this recently, getting all the context of all the bonds now up to this point before No Time to Die, so I got the whole spectrum. Um, looking back at this, um, I will say that I do I do enjoy this film. I do enjoy it. It's it's a it's this I think it's a good Bond film. Do I think it's great? No. There's some really weird choices in this movie and some of the motivations of the characters are kind of inconsistent. Um and aesthetically like there's some stuff that's kind of weird as well. But, you know, I still think it's enjoyable. Pierce Brosnan is really good as Bond. Um and I really like the action in this movie. And I think the villains are cool for the most part. There's a couple of them I wasn't really digging. We'll get into that. But, you know, I do enjoy this Bond film. I don't think this is the best of Brosnan's era, in my opinion. But, you know, I do think I do think it's good. I do think it's good. Um, but that's how I feel about it. What did you think about GoldenEye, Evan? Uh, um, I don't know. Usually, if if we're talking about like Brosnan films and Golden Eye uh, comes up, I usually just groan because I'm not a huge fan of this one. You know, we just had two dark, serious Bond films with Timothy Dalton. And then we go into this movie and it's like cheesy and really goofy. It's like, mm-hmm. well, okay, we're going to this shit now. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's, the movie is just really silly and it's kind of dumb uh, and it's really dated too like you can tell this is a 90s film mm-hmm. i'm trying to have all this oh look at all this over the top technology it's the 90s mm-hmm. i don't know the movie i don't know i, I mean i love, love pierce brosnan's bond i keep going back and forth as to whether my favorite is brosnan or daniel craig but this movie is not good, in my opinion. Mm. I mean, there are parts of it I like, but overall, I don't enjoy it that much. We got some hot takes tonight. I can tell. Um, so yeah, let us get into this. Um, so yeah, this is the this is the seventeenth James Bond film. So it's been. A, there's a lot of them came out this way. And this came out in 1995. It was the year I was born. So definitely like right. Mm. So I guess it, this was kind of before my time. Um, so I guess we could do, we can start with what we usually talk about the gun barrel, the pre tile sequence, the tile sequence. Um, okay, so I will say up front, Brosnan has the best gun barrel out of all of them, in my opinion. Um, like right from the get go, you can tell that there's more of a modern sensibility to the aesthetics right with the gun barrel. Cause like the barrel has more of this 3D shiny effect on there. And um, I love Bond's stand. I love uh, Brosnan's stance in the gun barrel. I think I think it's just perfect. The way he stands, the way he points the gun. It's like, I, for me, it's the best gun barrel of the entire series. Um, I go back and forth about which of Brosnan's Gun Barrel from which movies is my favorite. Like, cause I really like, I really like the Tomorrow Never Dies one. And I really like the, the world is not enough one. Die Another Day has that cheesy thing with the CG bullet. We'll talk about that when we get there. But like, you know, all of his Gun Barrels I like. Even this one, even with the weird music in the background, I still really like his Gun Barrel. It, this but um yeah I, I thought his gun barrel was great i know you don't have much to say about gun barrels in the movies but did, did you like his gun barrel he looks good in the gun barrel so yeah i, I think it is nice looking I, I can't really tell the difference between his different gun barrels other than the die another day one because that one's more distinct bullet mm-hmm. you know so they're all fine for me i i think they're good mm-hmm. really like the only like massive difference is the music i would say so that's why I'm like going back and forth because I like the music. I think I like the music in all of them. And then if you want to nitpick things, there's like different shadings with all of them. But like people don't really pay attention to that. That's fine. Um, so start off, they're at this Soviet base up in the mountains. 
and there's this um there's this mysterious figure running on the dam of the base and then he does this jump off of the dam which i thought was a really cool stunt um with probably some of the best stunts in the movie he jumping jumping off of the dam it was actually somebody doing that wire work so i thought that was really really cool um he breaks into the base um he also uses this laser gun which i thought okay that's cool you got a laser gun all right um when he breaks into the base he gets into a, a random bathroom and then he um sneaks into one of the one of the guys um stall or whatever and he's reading the newspaper and then he hears a noise and he puts the newspaper down and it's it's bond hanging upside down it's like oh sorry forgot to knock and then knocks him out <laughs> and then um he infiltrates the base um and then he beats up with another double O agent. Finally, we got some more double O agents in this franchise other than Bond. But yeah, double O six, who is Alec Trevelyan, played by Sean Bean. So they're both infiltrating the base together. Uh, so they're working together. And pretty much their, their goal is to blow up the base. So that's what they're pretty much going to do. They infiltrate the base. They shoot, do a bunch of sh uh, shoot ups um, when they get into the, when they get, uh, deeper into the um, base and then um, they go into this this room where they um, plant the bombs and then a bunch of Soviet soldiers come and find them so um, Alec tries to cover um, Bond while he's planting um, the bombs um, and then it ends up that the Soviets capture him and uh, the main general of the movie Ar Arkady, I think that's his name, um, has a gun to um, Alex's head, and then um, he just shoots him. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, pff, okay, <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna kill Sean Bean that early, huh? Oh wow, all right. Yeah, yeah, killing him already. Jeez, this, this in no still, time. Yeah, like I don't know if people notice, like he doesn't he die in most of the movies that he's in. Like, oh yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Sean Bean is notorious for for dying in pretty much everything he's in. Like, it's already nuts. And it's like, at the before we knew what the twist was later on, I was like, dang, they just didn't waste any time since the beginning of the movie. You got such a big actor to be a double O and you're just going to shoot him? Okay. So they shoot Alec. And then um, Bond escapes. Um, he takes this cart with a bunch of, I think it's the canisters of gasoline so the, so the soldiers won't shoot at, shoot at them so the whole place won't blow up. So he moves the cart slowly. And then um, he jumps into this conveyor belt thing. I think that sends him outside. And then um, there's like this patio, whatever, and he runs off the patio. There's a plane as well. Um, th th he has the plane running off of the off the runway and he's running after the plane. And then um, the plane goes off the cliff and then Bond Lily jumps after the jumps after the plane and then and then um falls into the, falls inside the plane while they're both free falling and bond really goes into the plane in the midair and then he pulls the plane up and um, and then he flies away and the whole base explodes as well that was also kind of a cool stunt but then that that part i kind of noticed a little bit more of the green screen uh it wasn't as fluid as the him jumping off of the dam but that's still a pretty neat stunt there um and then we get into the main title sequence finally i i've been waiting to watch these modern title sequences because up until that point it was just you know the silhouettes with the girls and the different colors and stuff like that i'm glad we're finally getting into the modern era of these title sequences because um Brosnan onwards and when we get to the Craig era stuff like these tile sequences look great um there's like more effects with the with the green screen and stuff like that and they able to do more um do more effects with it just it looked really cool and they have a Soviet Union type theme with this one so I thought it was cool and the whole gold gold theme as well I thought it was nice and then talking about the main theme of the movie um sung by tita turner i love this theme i i think it's one of the best bond themes of the entire series in my opinion um already a tita turner fan um so i'm already was bound to love it but i really liked what she did with this song um 
But yeah, the one thing I will nitpick though, when she's singing the hook and she's going, Golden Eye, find these weakness. Okay, that's a little, that's, that was a little too, uh, eh, eh, that sounded, eh, needed, needed uh, to work on that inflection there. But other than that, when she's singing the verses, it's really, really good. It's just that that hook. I'm just like, why, why are you so nasally? Golden Eye. Like, no, no. Yeah, no. that really bothered me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's literally everything else I didn't have a problem with. Which is like, you never know how I watched you from the shadows as a child. That stuff, that stuff was great. I loved it. Um, but yeah, I really loved that thing. Um, okay, so to talk about more about um, Pierce Brosnan as Bond. Um, as I said, I personally feel like this is my favorite Bond. Um, do I think he's the best? That's questionable, I guess, because, you know, you, we can get into a debate about, um, you know, which actor um, inherited the character the best based off the novels or based off the other older movies, whatever. But for me personally, why Broston is my favorite is that I feel like he encapsulates um, every... He encapsulates everything from the other actors, you know, um, like he has the he has the the charm and the charisma of a Roger Moore and Sean Connery, but he also can do the serious and like gritty um, stuff like Dalton and Craig. So I feel like he balances all of those traits really, really well. Um for, for for with Craig and Dalton and Connery and Roger, they they seem to lean more into either the the serious stuff or the comedic stuff. They didn't feel like there was as much of a balance, but like with Brosnan, I feel like he equally was able to do both of them without it feeling like it's overpowering one one another. But yeah, I def I definitely agree with that. I think this is the most balanced bond. Mm. And dad, on top of that, I think he's the, he's the he's the best looking Bond in my opinion. I think I don't know. I feel like he he's a he's a really good looking man. Like, yeah, he is. <laughs> it's like I can buy I can buy girls swooning over Pierce Brosnan. Um, he aged really really well though. I didn't even realize in this movie that he was already in his forties. Like he doesn't even look like it. He, he looks yeah really like I, I i know people complain like later on for like die another day that he's starting to get too old but like honestly he still looks good to me yeah like I, honestly that didn't that didn't really bother me as much in die another day i mean yeah you could tell that he's a little bit older but it's not like it's not like oh he he looks tired or you can't buy him doing yeah. that stuff or whatever but like, like Sean Connery and Roger Moore in their later movies. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I would oh. say Daniel aged Daniel aged pretty well. Well, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. D Daniel Craig, pretty good. You I mean you can tell he's older, but yeah, but it's not like good. distracting. Um. So they also got a new M and a new Monty Petty in this movie. Um, so first we talk about uh, Monty Penny played by Samantha Bond. Um, I really like her. Uh, she, I mean, of course, no one can replace the original Monty Penny, but like, I felt like she brought a new, I thought she, I thought she brought something new to the character. And of course, you know, this being in the nineties, we have a new, you know, women aren't, are or like being a little bit more, you know, independent and not, um, and they're not just, you know, side pieces for men. So it's like, you know, they have to establish that somewhat in this movie just to establish that, hey, women aren't just gonna be objects in this movie. They're actually gonna have a character and actually, you know, be somewhat of an equal to Bond. And, um, you know, Bonnie Petty established that off the get go <laughs> when Bond's trying to flirt with her or whatever. And, it's, and she's like, you know, this could be kind of this sexual harassment. It's like, oh, OK, we're doing this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that they're I, trying to. Yeah, I, that, that, yeah Sorry, that really you... is one of my 
that really is one of my problems with the earlier movies is I know a lot of people love those early Bond films, but like they really are sexist to the point where it's just like, I don't know, it's like distracting. Yeah, it's like they, they can. I, I know Bond is supposed to be a womanizer, but it, it, it's a little too over the top. Yeah, there's definitely moments in the Connery and the Moore films where, you know, where he's, you know, pursuing, you know, pursuing women and stuff like that. And there are times where I will feel uncomfortable because of like how put how much he pushes himself on women. It's just like this. I'm sorry, this stuff wouldn't really fly today. It, it just yeah, it just makes it dated, you know, with its, you know, it just feels like it feels like a product of his time but you know i definitely appreciate with you know now that we're getting into the brosnan and era it's like they're not doing that as much you know like the women actually oh, have a voice yeah yeah he yeah like brosnan and craig's bond you know they don't treat the women like objects but man brosnan's bond is still a man whore. oh yeah oh like, yeah he is really bad yeah yeah <laughs> it's just like, like it, that sort of gets distracting yeah like how sure. many women is sleeping with yeah of course um and then we have a new m played by the great judy dench oh man yep. the best m she sure is she is the best m um i did like the m's in the previous movie but they didn't have much of a presence, you know. I sometimes forgot they were in the movie. Um, but with, with Judy Dench, you know, she has such a presence in these films. Like she actually feels important to the plot, and she actually you actually see more of the dynamic between um, her and Bond and Monty Petty and stuff like that. So I really, really appreciated that. And no, it didn't bother me that they turned M into a woman. I thought it fit the character just as well as if if a man was a man. Um, and she also calls out Bond on his uh, on the way he treats women because that he had that awesome line where she says, "I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur." And I'm like, "Damn, <laughs> <laughs> this is great." That, um, that was my problem with the earlier M's. Is it feels like they didn't really hold Bond accountable for anything. They just gave him a little slap on the wrist. But this Bond is like, I'm not taking any of your shit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to yeah. let you have. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I thought that was great. Um, they did not change the actor for Q, though. They kept the same actor, um, which I'm I'm happy to still I'm happy to see him still on the role, though. I feel like at this point, you can kind of tell he's He's getting he's getting tired, and it's a little bit more difficult for him to talk talk the science jibber jabber. And there's a couple of times you could tell he's reading off a teleprompter. <laughs> but hey, you know. he still got it. Are you get? I love the original Q. <laughs> I love him too, but like he can do it. He is old. <laughs> I know he's old. He's so old, but he's still so good. He yeah doesn't really feel like a drop in quality i mean yeah i know like and maybe he seems like he's slower but he still feels like the same cue yeah definitely so i definitely i don't have a problem with him still being there but it's like you could you could tell okay he's probably needs to stop pretty soon um oh, no, he's hanging in there yeah, keep going <laughs> it's like the first the first dumbledore in the harry potter movies it's like you could tell it's almost time for him to go <laughs> oh no <laughs> Oh boy, too soon. Sorry, British fans. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, let's so also talk about the um the main Bond girl of the movie, um Natalia, um Simmons, I think, played by Isabella Skorupko. I hope I said her name right. Um, so I re I liked her. I liked her. Um, her accent, though, is so bad. <laughs> I did not like yeah, it. Yeah, her, her, her accent bothers me. 
And I don't know, may, maybe I'm just crazy, but I don't really think she's that hot. Oh, God. As far is, as Bond girls go. Wait, why is that a criticism? <laughs> like, hey, it was just a little, like, it was just a little distracting. Like, oh, you're not as hot as some of the other Bond girls. Like, I know you're a really nice girl and all, but. <laughs> I mean, I kind of liked that, the, that, you know, this time around, it's not just another hot, you know, woman where it's like you you couldn't really buy her doing these like scientific stuff or you know being a doctor or whatever or, or having a name that's really really distracting like Pussy Galore or Hollywood yeah. Woodhead or whatever so I like that they actually made a Bond girl you know just a regular girl you know and it's not like she's ugly she's a cute girl she's she's good looking oh, yeah she's but... not yeah, and she's she's a competent character too. I appreciated that. Like she actually, you know, can hold her own, and she tries to actually figure shit out for herself. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, you know, it didn't really bother me that oh she's not as hot. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> the girl in um the the Living Daylights wasn't that hot either. So I'm like, that was a problem with me. Oh yeah, I I, I can't even remember what she looks like. So I guess yeah, she was kind of forgettable. And there's like a couple of other Bond girls in the older movies where I'm like, okay, they're not really hot, but you know, they're they're good looking. Um, like um, for your eyes only, the girl in that one wasn't that hot either. Um, so to talk about the main henchman, henchwoman of the movie, um, Zenya Anatop, played by Famke Jensen, Jean Grey from the original X. Speaking of. Uh... Huh? Speaking of funny uh, names. Yeah, Zenya on, on the top. On the top. Really? <laughs> so you're gonna give the you're gonna give the henchwoman the weird name? Okay, great. <laughs> oh brother. Um, but yeah, so Famke Jensen, you know, if you guys have been following my channel, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of the X-Men films, and her as Jean Grey didn't really blow me away. Um, but I actually really liked her in this movie. Um, it's probably the most interesting character she's played in the movie for me. Um, it's just it's just so different, you know? And like, yeah, she's like really weird and over the top, but I thought it fit with her, you know? Uh, especially with her being a henchwoman. Like, you know, I just really like that they made her crazy, you know? And they made her deadly oh, yeah, as well. she's fucking insane. Oh my gosh, she is like a psychopath. Yeah, like I really love that about her. That just that just made her more of an intimidating henchwoman. It's probably one of my favorite hench people in the entire series for me. And I didn't think I would even care for Famka in the role, but you know she was really really good. She even she kills people. She kills people with her legs. <laughs> huh? Literally, there's a scene where she's having sex with one of the um, admirals or whatever, and um, she literally is just suffocating the guy with with her thighs, you know, until she snaps him in half and kills him. I'm like, holy shit, this girl is hardcore. It, ma it makes it, it, it like it makes it more fucked up because she's like getting off to it at the at the same time. Yeah, it's like whenever like she she's kills like people, she has like an orgasm. Like, like, what in the world? Even when she was shooting people, she was moaning. Like yeah. She was getting off. She was shooting at people. Yeah, like this. She's fucking nuts. Fucking nuts, man. Um, the, I'll say the, the probably the one character in this movie that I thought was awful was so bad. Um, Alan Cummings' character. That guy. Oh my god. He was so bad. Oh my god. Um Boris, that's his name. Boris, played by Alan Cumming. Boris. Oh so, he is a major reason why I don't like this movie. Like I'm not even kidding. He like really holds this movie back for me. You know, we were just saying that Anna Top was like one of the best secondary villains of the series. Mm-hmm. Boris is the worst secondary villain, in my opinion, of the entire series. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I could probably agree with that. Because, like, he's, like, the one that just 
got under my skin, really. And I from yeah. I hear from a lot of Bond fans that they really like this character, and I'm like, why? What? Why do you like him? Like, why? He's just so goofy and stupid, not in the good way. It's just he's annoying. And then that whole thing where he says, "I'm invincible," people actually like that. I'm like, that's not. Is that supposed to be funny? <laughs> Fucking <You're> like, stupid. <laughs> Dumb. I'd rather watch uh, Sheriff J.W. Pepper from the Roger Moore movies. Oh, gosh. Or I'd rather watch um, the horrible Blofeld in Diamonds Are Forever. I would rather watch it. Oh, oh, God. He was the worst fucking Blofeld. Oh, geez. He was so bad. God. Um, But, yeah, that's probably the one character in this movie where I'm like, I, you could have written him out entirely. Like, I did not want him at all. Um. And then even, like, the, the, the general from the beginning of the movie, like, didn't really do that much for me either. Um, I don't know. She, she was really there. Yeah, he's just there. Didn't really, didn't really care for him. Um, but the main villain of this movie, spoilers, um, turns out that Alex is the, is the main villain of the movie. He's the one that's running the whole syndicate with um on your top and the soviets and boris and stuff like that and their whole plan is to take control of this satellite called the golden eye and they're going to use that satellite because it shoots out an emp blast and so they're going to use that to rob the, the to rob banks and then also destroy destroy mi6 i think and take over the world uh, cause there's like this whole, I mean, I guess that's what's the, this is what you gotta expect with these Bond movies. Though. They want to take over the world, but, um, I guess that's the main plan. Cause like there's, they try to do like this backstory with Alec where, um, he is a descendant of allies of the Nazis and the British betrayed them. And so that's why he's after the British. Okay. <laughs> all right um i mean it's it is thin but it's like you know i could for the most part follow what was going on you know i guess he's just another another just another mustache twirling villain and it, it it's kind of it kind of sucks though because like as i said like we don't get a lot of other double o agents in the bond movies like they, we don't get a lot of development with them and it's like the one time we do it's like it just doesn't it doesn't feel as compelling, you know? And then, you know, I love Sean Bean, but I don't feel like, I don't feel like he was that interesting in this movie. Like he wasn't bad, but it's just like, he wasn't really able to chew up scenery as much as the secondary villains, you know? So, and it's- Yeah. Like, there, go ahead. Oh. My, my yeah, my problem with this movie is the the plot is just so cliche. It's just your typical, you know. Oh, I want revenge on Bond because you know his face was scarred because Bond set that explosion, but set it for a different time than when Alec thought it was, so he didn't have time to get out. Yeah, I mean he didn't get out in time before getting hurt. Uh, so you know he wants revenge on Bond for doing that to him. And then I am so sick of these plots with the high tech satellites. Like I know a lot of, I know a lot of movies did it after Goldeneye, so this is probably one of the early, earlier ones of those plots. But it's still really cliche and boring at this point. Mm. I, I don't care. Honestly, this is not even like the earlier. It's, it's not even like the earlier times they did this. They did this so many times in the older movies. They did this in Diamonds Are Forever. They did this with the man with the golden gun. They did this in Goldfinger. Like they've already done the the satellite thing so many times. So at this point, yeah, I was kind of getting tired of it. And they don't stop doing it because when we get to um, Die Another Day, oh my god, <laughs> that's like it was ridiculous. So. Even though it's kind of it's it's a little bit more creative that oh the golden knight sh shoots EMP blast so it's not like another laser type thing oh it is in Moonraker as well, um, but 
it's not like a typical laser satellite thing that we've seen numerous times. So at least they're creative with it being an EMP blast. So that's kind of cool. But like, once again, as you said, it was a, it's just another satellite weapon that they're trying to take control of, which, okay, whatever. Um, so I guess what kind of saved the movie for me personally is I feel like the, I really like the action in this movie. It's probably not the best thing to say. It's like, oh, the, the, I like the action in this movie, but like, really, um, the director for this film is Martin Campbell, who I personally feel is a really uneven director. He's done The Mask of Zorro, which I really enjoyed. Um, he went on to direct Casino Royale, but then he does these not so great films like um, The Legend of Zorro and <sighs> Green Lantern. <laughs> So, like, I don't know. It's just he's very uneven. But for me, like, Martin Campbell, like, really, I think he directed this movie really, really well. The action sequences, I think, are really, really cool. Um, there's the car, there's like the the car chase towards the beginning where Bond's in the Aston Martin and um, Anya Top's in her red car. Uh, I thought that was a really entertaining scene. And then, of course, they have the M sending that random chick to evaluate Bond <laughs> while he's driving the car. Please. <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, he ends up, uh, ends up uh, sleeping, with, sleeping with the girl, I, I think. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's what we're doing. So I, I thought that was entertaining. Oh, I um, I like the, I like the gadgets in the movie. Um, the exploding pen. That I like that. That ends up being a, that ends up being really important by the end. And then he has this grappling hook thing that uh, that comes off of his belt. So that was kind of cool. And then oh, he has a he has a gadget car, the BMW, which we don't see we don't see it do anything in the movie. <laughs> which I'm like, uh, why? The gadgets in this movie were were lame, in my opinion. They were lame. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no, they're not the best. <laughs> they're not the best. Um, uh, another thing, talking about, we said to talk about the Q's technology. I, there was a funny thing with um, where Q was in a cast and it shot a, a rocket launcher. That was kind of funny. Um, oh yeah, yeah, cool. But yeah, I mean, I like the, I like the um, when Bond and. Nat- um natasha natalia i'm sorry not natasha natalia and bond are escaping from the soviets and they end up capturing natalia and then the whole the whole chase in the city with a tank a freaking tank oh i I love the tank scene so it almost made me forgive that they didn't use the bmw in the movie but because you know whenever i see a tank sequence in a movie i'm like you get two thumbs up from me um yeah the tank sequence was yeah um and it's and um there was that one sequence when um when alec reveals himself to be alive to bond and then um he ends up um strapping bond and natalia in a um, helicopter and there's a countdown with the missiles that's going to shoot back at them and um he has to figure out a way to you know get them out before the missiles shoot them and blow them up and uh, he hits the eject button. I thought that was a pretty cool sequence. Uh, there's just a really a lot of um, cool set pieces, and even like the hand-to-hand combat fighting is like they're actually it's actually pretty brutal in this movie. Um, like with um, the Dalton movies, that was our introduction to seeing more of a brutal Bond. And as I said, I I bought Brosnan also being in um those brutal combat scenes i just i really like that especially when uh the final fight between bond and alec on top of the station satellite thing i thought that was a really cool fight um so so there's there's stuff like that where i'm like you know it's hard for me to like really be mad at this movie because it's an entertaining it's an entertaining action movie and it's like the character for the most part, even though like they're the writing is kind of weird in places, it's like it still comes around for me where I'm like I'm entertained by them. Um one thing we need to talk about is the score. The score in this movie is really weird. <laughs> it it sounds like 
it sounds like some music from an Atari game. And I don't understand. Uh-oh. I really don't understand their their choice with that. They were there were moments in this movie where the music did kind of take me out, especially um that that Aston Martin car chase that um. I'm like, what is this music? That <laughs> that's where it stood out to me the most is that car chase. It's like I'm like what? Sounds like some Mario Kart music. Like why are we doing? What is going on right now? <laughs> Um, so stuff like that, and even like, um, there's like this weird noises, like, like, okay, this is weird, but okay, this one is strange. <laughs> yeah, did you notice that with the score as well? <laughs> yeah, now that you mention it, yeah, that was pretty weird. Yeah, I, just, I, just don't understand. I didn't care for the music in this one. No, I mean there was a couple of moments where they're actually using like the, they're blaring the Bond theme, like especially with the tank sequence. I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that's a Bond score, but yeah, don't stop doing this arcade music. Weird, it's just, it's just weird. Um, and then one thing that we talk about many times, um, do uh, about you know us buying into the 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 relationship between Bond and the Bond girl? Does it feel rushed? To me, the the romance between the two really felt rushed in this movie. This was literally after um, Natalia was yelling at Bond for him being incompetent, as, I, as we talked about in License to Kill. And then there's that whole sequence of Bond trying to rescue Natalia from Alec and uh, on a train or whatever. Um, the, the train blows up, they get out in time, and then literally Natalia's like, I'm gonna kiss you now. What? What? Oh, where did this come from? <laughs> Why? And then they're like hanging out on a beach being lovers before they go to fight at the satellite. It's like, okay, you had to take time off to fuck before right. you go finish, finish off the movie. And then there was this really awkward scene where they're out, they're at a beach, and um, and then Natalia is trying to have like this really serious talk about why do you kill? Do you feel nothing? Like how could you be so cold? And then Bob's like, "It's what keeps me alive." And then Natalia's like, "No, it's what keeps you alone." And then Bond just like forces a kiss on her, and then oh, she just goes with it. And then they have sex. Rape. I don't know. I think she liked it. So is it is it right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that was really awkward. Like that's probably one of the most awkward like exchanges I've seen with you. It's just I don't know what they were trying to do. I mean, I appreciate them trying to trying to address like you know Bond being you know being emotionless when he kills i guess though it was just a weird time to address that you know because nothing really warranted that you know i i don't know it's just weird stuff like that um oh we forgot to mention um Val- valentine dimitri played by robbie coltrane hagrid from harry potter is introduced in this movie um oh, yeah he was good yeah he was good i liked him a lot they're former rivals and stuff like that and he has to go to him to figure out the um the syndicate's plans and stuff like that um for me i feel like this is probably the most serious because he comes back in the he comes back in future brosnan installments i felt like this is probably it's probably his I think this is his best performance in this one. I did like him in the in his feet. I did like him when he came back for World Is Not Enough, but like this one, I actually took him seriously as a um, as a threat. Like in the in the um, World Is Not Enough, I felt like they were trying to make him a little bit too co- comedic. So um, though, I did really like him. It's good to see. It's good to see um, Robbie in another film. 
And yeah, there are other sequences that I liked. Um, also talking about um, on the top um, when Natalia. Oh, actually, I should talk about the 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 fight scene where Bond and um, on the top were by the pool, or whatever. Uh, that was that was a, that was a cool sequence. It was kind of weird though because like um, on the top's trying to seduce Bond and like he's not having it, and then also. Um, on stops trying to trying to snap them in half with it with their thighs and i'm just like and then bond's just throwing her around the room like a rag doll i actually heard that um famka actually broke her ribs doing that sequence so they were going all in oh that. shit uh-huh yeah, I, that, that is a very strange sequence for me because it's very brutal and intense but it's also really sexy at the same time so yeah I'm, I, I'm always very confused when i'm watching that scene yeah, I I definitely agree. Like I really like it, but I'm like it it's it's just weird. It's like it's, it's trying to turn me on, but it's brutal at the same time. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then later on, um, later on in the movie when Natalia and Bond are on the plane, uh, Lily the the plane gets shot down, and then on the top comes out of nowhere, drops him out of a helicopter, and tries to kill them, and then um they end up. Uh, the rope that she's attached to on the helicopter, they they um they somehow have the the rope twist on a on a tree, and then she, I guess she she gets trapped in between the tree branches, and then he she dies that way. Did he she, did it snap her or something? I don't know. Yeah, because when the helicopter was was crashing, mm-hmm. you know, it pulled the rope towards the the helicopter. And mm-hmm. she hit the tree. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, that was that was a pretty that was a pretty brutal scene as well. Um, yeah, that was. Mm-hmm. Um, also, oh my! Um, in Bond's line. Oh, what was? He always like a good squeeze. <laughs> Just like a good squeeze. <laughs> That's the one thing with Brosnan's Bond. He really likes them one-liners. <laughs> like he does it all <laughs> the time in these movies. <laughs> but no, that, that one was good, though, just because that was so satisfying to see her die. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so, I also, um, there's a, they introduce another um, CIA agent that's not um, Felix Leiter, um, Jack Wade, played by Joe Don Baker, who was just the villain in The Living Daylights. So I don't. Okay, that's it. Was he? Yes. Yeah. Oh shit. Mm-hmm. I totally did not realize that. Yeah, yeah. I think I even remember saying that. That's when, you know, weird. When, I know it is weird. It's like. Lily, he was just a villain, and now he's a C- he's a CIA agent. Okay, calling James Jimbo, whatever. I'm like, okay, <laughs> Jimbo, Jimbo, <laughs> hey, Jimbo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, oh, man. I mean, I thought he was fine. I would have liked if they just made him Felix, you know, because he's still around. I mean, I know he got his arm. Um, eaten by a shark. I mean, his leg being eaten up by a shark, um, which apparently in the novels he actually was walking around with a wooden leg. So they could have done that, but they didn't want to. Which I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, and so, and then there's there's this pretty much the the only member, the only thing that he really did in the movie is that he gave Bond and Natalia the plane in exchange for their bmw so i'm like okay i guess oh and they end up and um apparently they were him and cia agents were hiding the whole time during the climax and they never helped and they just pop out of nowhere when bond and natalia fall from the sky i was like okay where where were you guys at why did y'all do anything but okay whatever um, so they they end up uh, blowing up the blowing up Alex's base and the syndicate's base, and then they end up blowing up the the um, the Golden Eye satellite by the end. Uh, this whole action sequence with Alec and Bond and stuff like that, uh, pretty cool sequence. Whatever. Um, Boris gets killed in the most satisfying way possible um, when the base is blowing up. He thought he, you know 
he he survived the explosions, whatever. And and after the explosions calmed down, he's like, I'm invincible. And then there's like these freezing chemicals that just pour on top of him, and then he freezes to death and dies in a pose. Like, so I'm like, okay, thank God you killed this motherfucker. And like, this is I, I was I, like, hmm. I think it was I, I couldn't remember if it's hydrogen or nitrogen. That yeah, yeah, it's it's one of those things. Yeah, but yeah, that's what that's what poured on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad glad he I'm glad he died finally. Um, so yeah, they end up saving the day at the end, you know. And um, Alec actually dies; he actually falls to his death um, when he's fighting Bond on the. Um, that 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 dish whatever man this this movie is brutal he literally literally see him fall they don't cut away they actually you see him fall <laughs> and then yeah that was awesome mm-hmm. and i think debris just crashed on top of him as well i'm like dang this movie is yeah this movie is intense i really i like that oh um, like an overkill <laughs> literally um, so yeah, they ride off into the sunset. Um, happy ending. CIA, CIA agents and Jack Wade, you know, meet up with them and then they go home. So, okay. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's everything I wanted to cover. Anything you want to bring up before we close out? Uh, not really. Mm. But yeah, I mean, overall... I mean, I, I enjoy this movie. Um, I, I think it's a good time. I'm, I was entertained by it. I do feel like this movie is a little overrated. It's a little overrated. And it's coming from someone who loves Pierce Brosnan's Bond, you know. Um, but yeah, just for me, I just felt like there was just a really, there's just a lot of weird choices in this movie with the direction and the writing. And even like aesthetic wise with the music and stuff like that. And just the performances are sometimes a little too over the top. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but yeah, I thought Pierce Brosnan was great. This was a great first outing for him, even though I felt the movie wasn't great. I thought he did awesome in the movie. Um, I really liked the Bond girl, Natalia. thought she was pretty solid. Um, I liked the new um, the new act- actresses for Monty Penny and M. I'm glad Q came back. Um, I really liked Famke Jensen as on the top. Um, very entertaining to watch how over the top she is. Um, Alan Cumming as Boris. No, just just no. Don't like him. Cool. No. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do enjoy this Bond film. I think it's good. Do I think it's the best? No. Do I think it's great? No. But, you know, I thought this was a solid outing for Brosnan and I was looking forward to and you know, it, it only got better from there. Well, kind of ish. You know, I think I think <laughs> yeah, kind of. It, it it goes up and down for his movies as well. But it's like I feel like there's a couple of the Brosnan movies that I felt like improved from this, in my opinion. But um, overall, I will say that Goldeneye is pretty good. It's pretty good. Evan. All right. Um, I don't think this movie's bad. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a it, it's an okay enough movie. You know, it, it, it's it has enjoyable moments. I I think it's really overrated though. You know, and I agree with all the all the points that you just said. I thought, you know, Brosnan did you know a great job in all the supporting cast, except for Boris. <laughs> you know, they, they were all great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just the, the movie's just not that interesting to me with the story. And it, yeah, it, it just has some really weird creative choices in there, like you said. And um, yeah, for me, it does just go up from here because GoldenEye is my least favorite out of Brosnan's films. Mm. So I would give this one just okay. All right. Well, that is our thoughts on. Goldeneye. What did you guys think about it? Did you guys love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was okay? Comment below. Let us know. Um, so the next Bond film we will be talking about is Tomorrow Never Dies. So tune in for that when it comes out. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
and hit the bell if you want to be notified on future videos I'll be doing. But that's all we have for you Bond fans, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. See you later.